So I'm up next. I'm going to make the. Uh, I'm going to change the strawberry cream ice over to a strawberry Italian ice. I was ice. looking for this before. This is the size of my containers. I have about 300 of these or 400 of these in the store. This is what we put in inventory. It's what we dip from. These are our containers. They're Cambro one-gallon containers with lids, of course. Okay, I'm going to start now. What? You can put that in the freezer. <laughs> that was great. Of course, yeah. In the freezer. Just like, mine aren't clear though. The clear ones are more expensive. Okay. We're passing around the formula. You'll see that the sugar level on the strawberry is dropped way down to uh, one pound, four ounces. Uh, the reason for that is I'm going to be using whole strawberries. Now, when you eat a strawberry, it's sweet. It has fructose in it. So a lot of the sugar from the, for the formula is going to come from right here. Not that they're in a syrup or anything added, just the fruit itself has a higher sugar content. So my regular cane sugar goes down. Uh, so let me get that. Uh, one pound, four ounces. I'll get it. Okay. Well, just getting the one pound, four ounces, I'll get the quart and a half of water. Uh, we might um, need more sugar. I don't think I have a pound, four ounces here. Whoa. Okay, I got some here. Uh, interesting topic about water. People say, do I have to filter my water? And the answer is yes and no. Um, and I'll hopefully explain that. Here in Brooksville, Florida, where we are, which is an hour north of Tampa, we don't have any tourists. Uh, we don't even have anybody getting lost coming through town. It's, it's a town of uh, uh, cattle and horses, and we've got pigs, and we've got turkeys, and we've got snakes. Uh, we don't have a lot of people. We do have people who uh, have lived here all their lives. So if I set up a business here in Brooksville, and I'm going to make Italian ice for the people of Brooksville, I don't have to filter this water because they've been drinking it all their lives. It's exactly what they're used to. Now, if I go down to Miami, thank you. Mm -hmm. If I go down to Miami, uh, Miami is all New Yorkers on vacation. So the water has to taste like it does in New York. Uh, here, the mineral content is so high. If you've got, a, for example, a dishwasher, you have to replace it every four years because all the pipes get clogged up with minerals. So uh, you filter the water. You put it in a Culligan water system. Uh, or something like that. Jeff doesn't have to filter his water because all the people that he deals with are residents. They live uh, in, in Fruit Loops. So they're used to the area, <laughs> sorry, Fruit Land. They're used to the area and, and, and the water, and so nothing special has to be done. So the answer to the question is it depends on who you're selling to and where. Uh, Italian ice is, though, it's not nearly as critical as, say, a bagel. You, everybody knows you can't make a bagel without New York water. That's just all there is to it. Um, wow, you really move fast sometimes. <laughs> Put that in, too? Yeah, sure. Might as well. So you see on the recipe, we've got the sugar, water, uh, the ice cream blend, some vanilla, and the strawberries. Very good. Oh, boy. We added the ice cream blend, didn't we? Yeah, that's what you want. We there, just right? made a cream ice. Sorry, Oh, that's guys. all right. Leave it. I'll, 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 we'll do something else with it. No problem. All right. We'll, go, we'll do it again because we're going to make this just a straight Italian ice instead of a cream ice. Okay. Excuse me? Uh, not ice cream. It's all water. Yeah, it would be a cream ice. What did uh, you need? Ice, one pound, four ounces? One pound, four ounces. Ice cream, the blend that we buy consists of milk, cream, skim milk, and sugar. <clears throat> if you were making a recipe at home, you probably wouldn't know to put in skim milk. Sometimes skim milk is just as simple as this, non-fat dry milk powder. Um, and the, um, the purpose of it is skim milk is heavy cream with all the fat removed. So all the fat's gone, but all the good stuff is still in skim milk. That's why skim milk's good for it. If you put it on your cereal, it's great. You're not adding any fat, but you're getting all the good stuff. We, How much water, boss? Water is one and a half. Still? No, make it two quarts. That's what I thought. Two quarts. Uh, so skim milk is, uh, we call it milk solids, not fat. Meaning it's got the solids, the good stuff, uh, that's in uh, heavy cream, but without the fat. So uh, if you're working on a home recipe, make sure you add the skim milk. A lady called me up last night 
and one of her products was overly icy. And I said, you need to take the fat content up. Let's do it with skim milk. And I had to explain to her why the skim milk was a good product. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about? Um, any questions so far? Okay. Okay, you're good. Except All right. for uh, strawberries. All right. Good. So let me pour this in. Once Make sure again, the don't closed. be afraid to throw stuff out. You know, we just dumped that away. It, it's, you know, just do it. Just dump it out. Doesn't taste good the next day when you're ready to sell it? Dump it out. Okay, need a knife. And we'll turn this on. Those are whole strawberries. You can puree them uh, if you wanted with a little sugar and a little water in a blender, and that would help out a little bit. I may have to put this in a smaller container and work from there. That'll get me going. Never. Never. Because they're inconsistent. Do, you, do uh, we have the blender? What? Will these puree mm -hmm. up quick? Oh, sure. In a heartbeat. I'm going to puree these up. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Let's and you know that. what? We'll add a little water from here. All right. Turn it off. There. You know what? These I thought these were going to be pieces. They're whole strawberries, so we're going to puree them. There you go. You have a blender handy? Yeah. Just to give it a little better taste. I thought I heard that somewhere. That oh, I think I heard it with the... Uh, Oreo cookies, or the uh, m &Ms. Okay, what was your question? What did you... uh, fresh strawberries. Yeah. Oh, fresh, fresh fruit versus frozen. Give me a real quick. I never use fresh fruit. Uh, my wife went, she picks fruit. You know, you pick them, she goes. <laughs> anyway, she came back the other day with a whole basket of peaches. I mean, perfect, juicy peaches. And they were terrific. She went back the next day and picked blackberries. Blackberries. And I said, pick some for the store. We'll do some blackberry, you know, whatever. So she laid them out on the cookie sheets. And I walked by and I went, whoa, sour. She said, oh, no, they're sweet. And then she told me how you identify a sweet blackberry from a non-sweet blackberry. The, the little nodules on them, the bigger, the sweeter. The smaller, the more sour. So my point is, the inconsistency in fresh fruit is no good for ice cream, in my opinion, because uh, mango, a great, great ice cream flavor, but you can buy uh, five for five dollars, you know, dollar mangoes, that's my limit, and they'll be ripe as hell, ready to roll. But then you get some that are not ripe, and they don't taste good at all. So if you buy bags of frozen, it's more expensive, but they're consistent. Every bag is going to be the same. That's my take on it. The same thing. Um, I agree with Jeff on that exactly. Because well, you have to. When you move down here, when we moved down from uh, New York, uh, I found out right away that the orange season, and we have Florida orange juice, orange juice. The, the orange season starts in November and goes till the end of March. In November, the oranges are terribly bitter. They're awful. You wouldn't want to eat them. And at the end of March, it's like candy. They're so good. So when you get a company like Minute Maid or Tropicana, I'll do it in here. Okay. Minute Maid or Tropicana, and you buy the frozen, thank you, concentrate, it's always good. It's always wonderful because they take the oranges from November, December, January, February, March and blend it so that no matter what time of year you buy the, or the frozen orange juice, it's perfect. I buy the lowest priced uh, frozen uh, fruit that I can because it's, it makes a great product. And again, it's what Jeff and I do. We buy our flavors at the supermarket. Yeah, the front cover of my book, 
I, as I told you before, I don't have any of these things in my store, nothing. I go supermarketing. And uh, you find, and, and where I go supermarketing is uh, the best is ethnic markets. And I'll tell you a real quick story. I was in, uh, I don't know, wherever I am, and I see a West Indian market, I'm there. I see an Asian market, I'm there. A Latin market. Bravo Supermarkets. You ever heard of Bravo Supermarkets? It's the Latin version of Winn-Dixie. And it's geared towards Hispanic foods. Well, I was walking through the aisles, as I always do, and I see, oh, I forget what it's called. But I see these jars uh, that you can't see through them, and I... I can't understand it. I speak a little Spanish, but not enough to understand it. And people were coming up the aisle and said, what's this? And they said, oh, delicious, very good. You add two tablespoons to a glass of water, and it's great. So I bought it. <laughs> and I took it home at the store, and I opened it up, and I look at the ingredients. The ingredients were vanilla, cinnamon, and rice. What do we have? We have, it's horchata. It's rice pudding. Rice pudding. So I, I, I'll show you how to make a, a recipe tomorrow, but uh, I did it on the counter, and damn, if that wasn't rice pudding. I mean, it was exactly rice pudding, ice cream. So I made it, put it out the next day as rice pudding ice cream, and it flew out of there. Because once you taste it, you're hooked. I mean, it's, it's rice pudding ice cream. And it was delicious. How did you know how much sugar Well, that's, that's how you make a recipe. You know, you make a formula. Um, I don't have time now, but... Um, On these Italian ices, if you're trying to come up with recipes, the, uh, it's a balance of sugar and water. So on a machine twice this size, which is my usual machine and where I'm used to thinking, it's going to be between six and eight pounds of sugar. This is a lemon ice formula. Six to eight pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice, and six California lemons. I'm taking the outside skin and just grating them off, what a chef calls the zest, because I'm going to end up with a pure white product. No colors in this, no artificial anything. Pure white product with little specks of lemon in it. It's beautiful. So that's my sugar water formula. And so if I'm going to try to come up tonight with a strawberry formula, which I did here, I say, okay, uh, lemons are tart and strawberries are sweet. So my strawberry ice should be sweeter than my um, lemon ice, okay? One's tart, one's sweet. So you would think more sugar into the strawberry. But I am now taking uh, this a uh, pound and a half, two pounds of strawberries, and they're loaded with fructose, so they are my source of sugar, big source of sugar. So now I'm actually taking down the sugar level, and I guess at it, we'll see how it comes out. I took the sugar level down uh, from what my lemon ice would be, because I'm counting on the strawberries for my sweetness, and we'll see how it comes out. Uh, it should come out fine, yes. Guava for Italian ice? I haven't, but guava there's no reason. great. I haven't. Is it, have you done it? You do oh, it for sure. ice cream? Ice cream. Guava ice cream. Great. Got to add a significant amount of sugar, though. Guava is not inherently that sweet, so I sweeten it a little. Now, as far as sweetening stuff, don't overlook honey. Um, yeah. Honey's... Oh, no. I... I buy honey by the gallon, and unfortunately about 80 bucks for a gallon of honey, but I buy local raw honey. Not Subi from the store, which is probably okay, but I get local raw honey, and there's eight different kinds of honey. Some are sweeter than others, some have a different flavor than others. Um, so decide what you like, but we make a, a sweet bourbon, a honey bourbon ice cream that is like almost our number one seller. Um, I mean, it has a gallon of bourbon in it. Um. <laughs> yeah. Another way you can go is with agave. Uh, agave is what uh, tequila is made from. It's a bit pricey at a health food store. That would cost $7. At the supermarket, it's three and a quarter. 
so you want to price it out. You can probably buy it at, at Amazon a lot cheaper. It's twice as sweet as sugar. And uh, for someone like me who's a type 1 diabetic and shouldn't be eating any of this stuff, uh, on a glycemic scale of 1 to 100, 100 is the worst for me. Zero would be the best. Sugar comes in at 92 uh, on the glycemic scale. This stuff comes in at 27. Like I said, I shouldn't be buying any of this. I have no business walking into uh, Jeff's store. But I'm like everyone else, I cheat. So if I'm going to cheat, this would be a better way to go using the agave. And it's also nice when you're talking to the health food nuts uh, that you have something different. Well, every, you know, on a couple of flavors, we use agave. So it's different. It's nice. The honey works great. Maple syrup works great, though maple syrup has a very strong taste to it. Uh, but if you want to experiment with different things, it's fine. What doesn't work are the artificial sweeteners. Even the semi-natural ones like stevia, they don't have enough oomph to them to be a sweetener for ice cream. When we, or ices, when we make a frozen dessert, we have to freeze, as I said before, either fat or sugar. You have to have fat or sugar or a combination of the both. Without it, you can't have a frozen dessert. You'll have just a mass of ice uh, frozen on the walls of the machine. It's not Italian ice without the sugar in it. So uh, you can look for different ways of, of freezing it, but um, if you see a sugar-free Italian ice, I think Jeff put it very well. Anytime you see something sugar-free, it's loaded with chemicals. And there is a substitute for sugar called multidextrin. And multidextrin, well, don't write it down, you don't want it. Multidextrin, you know, I, I don't do anything halfway. So when I go into this, uh, the pharmacy and they have these little bags of Stouffer's sugar-free chocolates, and I'm sitting there, I'm eating the whole bag of sugar-free chocolates, and then I kind of read the print and it says, eat one or two or stomach distress may occur. <laughs> stomach distress is a nice way of saying Montezuma's revenge, and we all know what that means. This stuff will tear you to pieces, I can tell you from first hand. And so you don't want to be giving someone an Italian ice who 12 hours later is saying, what happened? <laughs> you know, it's not good for business. So you do have to say to some customers, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Um, but we're all trying to be healthier. Uh, Paula has me putting organic lettuce on my Big Mac now. So I'm making big strides. Um, but something like agave is, is a nice thing to uh, try to play with. Sure. Oh, this looks ready. Uh, I'll grab it from up there. Thank you. All right, watch carefully. Here we go. Put that under it after you're done. All right. Ken, can you zoom in? And that color is all natural because that came from the strawberries. That is Italian ice. And again, the, no dairy. That's also known as sorbet or sorbetto. Absolutely, yeah. We, yeah. we were talking about that this morning. Sherbert is not Italian ice. Sherbert is usually a lot of chemicals and uh, dairy and sugar and water. Now, right there you have a seven dollar portion of sorbet yeah that we talked about that and uh, now let me show you a dollar fifty portion of Italian ice right there so you can see the only difference is in the presentation oh that's good you'll like that come on up very fresh I'm not supposed to eat that. Don't tell mom.